No. It's in Toronto. So we'll uh, open the Standing Committee's uh, portion of the meeting. First on the agenda is the Building and Planning Committee. And item A on the agenda is a severance application B0517, William Craig. Uh, recommendation is that the Building and Planning Committee recommend Council of the Township Whitewater Region support severance application B0517 with the following comment. A registered plan of survey be required. Uh, can I have a mover? Councilor McLaughlin, seconder, Councilor Jackson. Turn over to Doug. Yes, this is a severance that uh, Mr. Craig wants to do. It's on Mansell Hill Road. And uh, Mr. Craig was applying for a severance before down near uh, Spring Drive. And uh, because of the water conditions and stuff like that, he decided to kind of stay away from that one and change his mind. This is a lot better severance area. It's higher up in the ground, uh, oh, a lot, long ways from the water. So uh, definitely uh, a better location on his property. Any questions, comments? Seeing as none, we'll have a vote. All in favor? All opposed? That's carried. Item B. Severance applications B10 to B1217, Ward Bice. Uh, report severance application B10 to B1217, Key Map B10 to B1217. Recommendation that the Building and Planning Committee recommend Council of the Township Whitewater Region support severance applications B1017, B1117, and B1217 with the following comments. Registered plan of survey be required, a private road agreement be entered into, and a right of way be registered on title. Uh, mover. Councillor Mackay, seconder, Councillor Rieger. Doug? Yes, this is a property that Mr. Bice owns. Uh, it's, uh, to give you an idea where it is, you go in uh, uh, behind where the, just past the brewery, uh, you go in along a private road right away that goes to the back of the property. He's wishing to sever off three lots down there on the water and to sell them. Uh, the lots are high, dry, Nice, nice viewing lots, no problems for a septic. Um, I don't see an issue with these person. Any questions or comments? Councilor McLaughlin? Is that part of the old property that was Log and Lantern? That's part of the old property that at one time yeah. was Log and Lantern. And so he's, he's applied for a rezoning for that part already and the rezoning has already been completed. Um, um, to change it to uh, from a commercial to to uh, LSR. Okay. Yeah, and that and that's like on uh, River Run side of uh, that, the brewery. That's Isn't correct. That correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Jackson. What size are the lots? Uh, the lots are um, they're roughly about uh, they're almost like they're almost like uh, two acres. Each? Each yeah. lot, yes. Okay. So they're nice sized lots. Yep. Uh, you know, he's going to have to be 100 feet from the water and always uh, and uh, with them and uh, the wrap. It's right at the wrap. It's a good looking lot. Any further comments or questions? So we'll vote. All in favor? Carried. Third item, item C, service application B1716, Bonus Excavating Inc. Uh, report severance application B1716, key map B1716. Recommendation that the Building and Planning Committee can recommend Council of Township Whitewater Region support severance application B1716 with the following comment. Uh, favorable comments from the Township regarding Municipal Reserve severance, uh, servicing for the proposed vacant lot. Favorable comments from the Township regarding proposed servicing easements. Favorable comments from the Township regarding access to Wallace Drive. 
The township confirms the application sketch accurately depicts the size as built, including building dimensions, setbacks, and parking, and favorable comments from the Ministry of Transportation. Uh, mover. Okay. I have to claim a pecuniary interest okay. on this, sorry. Mover, Councillor Mackay, seconder, Councillor McLaughlin. Doug. So this is the, the piece of property that uh, that the Whitewater Breweries is on. Uh, BEI owns uh, both properties, uh, or all the property right now. They want to sever off uh, the brewery part to have an, uh, a lot that they can uh, use for another commercial development. Um, we have uh, forwarded it through to the county planning for reports, um, and uh, Steve has commented on the water and sewer, and you know we're, we're okay with it at this point. Uh, if there's any other questions, I'll try to answer them. Okay, Councilman uh, Jackson. What's um, oh storm facility? Something, yeah, yeah. There, there's uh, there's a storm management pond there and uh, two uh, easements, a water easement and a storm uh, uh, management uh, easement that goes to mm -hmm. the McLaren property after and goes down. Um, they may, if the right development comes there and that, they may have to alter that. I'm not sure, but that's what was developed there for the Whitewater Brewery property uh, to get rid of the storm water off that both properties and to manage it. And Doug, that storm uh, pond is there now, is it not? Yes. It's in use now, right. Councilor Jackson? The other question I have is I see where the entrance coming off of Highway uh, 17 or Pembroke Street, um, it's halfway in the middle of that entrance. Is that what it looks like? Yes. They're gonna, they're, what they're proposing is a shared entrance on that one side and then also an entrance coming in off of... Uh, off of uh, Wallace. Wallace Street then also too. MTO will have its final say on, on the entrance and whether they agree with that shared entrance. Uh, it's up to MTO what they require for entrance and whether they'll allow another entrance off that, that property. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll have a vote. All in favor? Opposed? And carried. Good night, everyone. Thanks. You're not sticking around, Doug? Can you send us updates? Services. So we'll roll along into uh, that's the end of the um, building com planning committee. We'll now move to community services. First item on the agenda is the first Cobb and Cubs and Beavers. Uh, report first, Cobb and Cubs and Beavers recommendation that the Community Services Committee recommend Council Township Whitewater Region authorize the request from the first Cobb and Cubs and Beavers for three projects at the Veterans Memorial Park in Cobden. Um, we had a presentation on this last council, I believe, from the Beavers and, and uh, Cubs. Uh, so a mover or seconder? Mayor's mover, uh, Council Rieger seconder, and Jordan wants to say something. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so just to kind of um, analyze it a little bit, there's going to be three initiatives, and the first initiative is going to be uh, introducing a, a butterfly pollinator. So they're going to be putting in some flowers and low-lying bushes. Uh, the second initiative will focus on installing duck boxes. Uh, this will be a great piece to kind of educate people, children, youth, maybe even adults um, on these boxes. And the final initiative will be uh, garbage and recycling receptacles. Uh, they're hoping to put uh, slogans or wording to, uh, to educate people on um, um, you know, keeping our community clean and free of trash. Questions or comments? Council McLaughlin? I, I just wonder if Steve had any comments on the, uh, the trash cans? Uh, no, Councillor McLaughlin, I don't. Okay, because okay, I just wondered, we've had problems there before with the trash cans. Mm -hmm. yeah. We still have them there. Okay. Uh, I, I personally think the duck boxes would be good in the walking, that walking trail through the marsh. That's just my my preference. Any further comments or questions? You guys really want to talk, you don't you, <laughs> Mayor? 
I believe when we were discussing it with the leaders uh, at the last meeting, they had shown uh, quite a bit of interest of, of doing some work on the uh, on our walking trail, and that could be split. I'm sure if you, if they were talked to, I'm sure they would have no problem with that. Um, CAO. First, let me um, welcome Jordan to the team, and I should say that he's hit the ground running in the two weeks we've had him, and uh, and we're really fortunate to have him join us from the city of Pembroke. So thanks publicly, Jordan, for joining the, the team. Thank you. Uh, Jordan will work with the first Cubs as well as the Civitan with regard to this park, including the the, the walkway. Um, but this is really to allow them to move forward with the three projects that they had outlined. And uh, through that work with Jordan, we'll determine the exact location of, of some of these projects. I should note also that um, they were applying for their own funding. If they don't have it, there is the natural place basis funding that the, we've authorized the local planning group to, to um, issue grants. So that these would really fit well within that in terms of getting youth involved in our parks and the natural place basis. All right, uh, Council McLaughlin. Uh, I don't know if this is the right place to bring it up, but I know that they're talking. Uh, I was at Civitan meeting last night, and they're talking to do the cleanup. I think it's the Monday, and I think it's Monday is the 18th of May. I think they they were thinking uh, of doing the cleanup. I'm not sure, but maybe we could coordinate and make sure because uh, I guess there's a lot of limbs and brushes and. I just thought I'd pass it on to Robert or Jordan, I don't know. I'll pass it on to Robert and he can designate it as fit and deals necessary. It might be the 15th or the 22nd, or the 18th or Thursday. Probably the 15th because the 22nd, would that be the long weekend? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. No, it's the weekend before, so it's the 15th. Uh, thank you. Okay. Well, uh, no more questions. We'll have a vote. All in favor? Carried. Second item on the agenda is tourism booth. Uh, recommendation that the Community Service Committee recommend Council of Township Whitewater Region approve a one-year pilot project using summer staff in addition to dedicated volunteers to support the existing tourism booth at Veterans Memorial Park in Cobden. Uh, mover, Mayor, Seconder, Council McLaughlin. Um, Jordan, you want to speak to that? <coughs> Uh, so probably as you're all aware, um, we've had a, um, a death of a dedicated um, volunteer and uh, so they oversaw the, the, the tourism booth and assisted with many roles. Um, we do have a summer student that's going to be coming in as of next week. She's going to uh, help us coordinate um, a lot of the, the items associated with the tourism booth. And um, we're actually uh, looking to, uh, well, as of right now, we're contacting our volunteers, inviting them back for another season, and we're about 90% there. So hopefully uh, within the next week or so, we should have everybody confirmed. Uh, we also have been receiving uh, quite a few tourism pamphlets, um, so we're sending those over to the visitor's booth right now. Uh, probably next week when our summer student joins us, then uh, we're going to be taking an inventory on all the, the brochures as well, and uh, we'll get that up to speed and, and ready for the opener in May. Um, and then, of course, um, we also have our uh, annual luncheon that's planned, and that's planned for May 11th here at the Municipal Building. Municipal building. And uh, next week, our summer staff will assist us uh, by contacting the, the volunteers and, and inviting them in. Any questions or comments? You must have answered everybody's questions. <laughs> Seeing as none, we'll have a vote. All in favor? Carried. Third item on the agenda is operation of campground for the 2017 season. Uh, recommendation that the committee uh, services committee, uh, sorry, community services committee recommend Council of Tanshaw Whitewater Region approve a one-year pilot project using summer staff to support the existing municipal campground located at Veterans Memorial Park in Cobden. So similar to the last request, Jordan, do you ever want to add anything to that? Um, you know, just other other than that, uh, we've had a long-time um, operator who passed away, um, and uh, we're just looking to um, offset some of the the roles with uh, our summer staff. We're just trying to get them over in seconder. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, not, I'm, I'm still not kind of in sync with the <laughs> new structure. Were... Yeah, the mover was uh, Councillor Jackson, the seconder was the mayor. Sorry, Jordan. Hey, no worries. 
We weren't uh, talking about you. That's okay. Uh, I'll start over. That's fine. Um, so uh, recently, a long-time um, operator had passed away that uh, used to oversee the campgrounds, used to collect the fees and whatnot, uh, look after washrooms and those kind of things. So we're going to try and offset um, some of the work with our summer student this year, and uh, hopefully that will give us an idea to kind of uh, address the overall operation of the campgrounds, and then we can provide a report to Council in the fall. Great. Any questions, comments? Councilor McLaughlin? Well, uh, I, I don't know, but in the past, I know many years ago, this was an evening job to go around and to collect the fees. I don't know if the summer student is going to do, if that's what the thoughts are or not, because if, if it is, you're going to stretch your hours pretty quick as well. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically, we're we're going to look after the scheduling, and uh, you know there may be some evening, weekend, that kind of work. We've also talked about perhaps um, posting a sign down there that during the week, anyone that's staying with us can come to the municipal municipal building between 8:30 and 4 and pay for their their fees as well. Okay, because in the back of my mind, I, I keep thinking of one person here in Whitewater Region or in Cobden that might be a great candidate just to take over that part. Of collecting our, our fees, so that that's the yeah. only place I was coming from. Robert, uh, the one thing that we'll look at, I think, what the goal is to get us through the summer. I've been here four months. Jordan's been here two weeks. Um, is to see if we can do it with a summer student, but then, but really get a sense of how the operation is. I want to note that we're not bringing in lots of money for this campground. Um, Twenty-two hundred dollars was what's forecasted in this year's budget and last year. Um, uh, 2460 was received and 1845, so 75% went to the operator. So I think we have to take a good look in the fall whether camping at that site is critical and necessary or is it more suitable for a picnic area. Um, the sites aren't marked. The fees have not been looked at for a number of years. Um, what's the best way to approach it? So I think before we commit to a third party and RFPing it or tendering it out or looking at other options, we just want to kind of get through the summer and then um, look at the data usage, how many people are coming, are there other ways of marketing it, are we competing with um, the private sector, the, the, the wonderful um, campgrounds that, are, that exist along Highway 17, and then come back with a more fulsome set of recommendations in the fall. Uh, but but you agreed, um, if it does continue, that may be the best option going forward is having uh, somebody from the community look after it. Uh, but I think we need to take a, a fuller look uh, once we get through the summer. Councilor McLaughlin? Yeah, after uh, Robert has shown me what kind of revenue is generated, I think I can totally agree with what he's saying. We could go on the honor system. I, we'd probably maybe even be ahead <laughs> at the tail end. Yep, Robert. Uh, the park student um, is also going to help with a number of other initiatives, uh, like a parks inventory, assist with special events. We have the, the wonderful street strut coming up that uh, is now under Jordan's uh, auspices uh, with a lot of work, um, some parks and other parks and recreation duties. So this student will, yes, be a park attendant, but will also, Jordan will fully utilize their services. So it's $5,000 for that summer student, but just want to say they will not only be doing this, they will be doing a number of other activities to get us caught up in parks and recreation. Okay, uh, just, just a quick thought that came to my mind. I'm wondering if we should put a box down there that money could be dropped into. Uh, that might be make it much easier than them coming up here. Uh, I know, well, it's all totally on the honor system anyway, so it uh, was just a thought. I think your, your cost of uh, putting a box in um, and inviting perhaps vandalism and that kind of thing, uh, the, the cost of putting a box in may be, may be prohibitive. Mayor? I believe uh, I agree with Councillor McLaughlin in that people would be leaving probably somewhere between 7 and 9 and if our student opened the box and took the money out every morning, uh, there would be nothing in it for the overnight. Most likely nobody really pays at night there and so it wouldn't be open to vandalism. It could be a real cheap box just with a little lock on it and there would be more of them would put money in there, I, I think. And uh, then there would be drive up here to put money in, I think. 
Councilor McGraw, uh, sorry, Councilor J Jackson. I think if we have any kind of box, whether there's money in it or not, is just leading towards vandalism, unfortunately. Um, there's been several um, places that have been vandalized over the last few years within um, the former village of Cobden. And uh, like I said, whether we put a lock box or a box with just a lock on it, um, it's going to um, increase the vandalism and we're going to be replacing it. I'm not in favor of putting any kind of a box down there. Mayor? Yeah, just a crazy thought, but a drop box in, uh, in the tourist booth where it's not visible outside, do you think that they'd try to tear the booths apart? May I make a suggestion? That yes. we'll leave it to our new expert? Yes. Perfect. Great. So, uh, no more questions on this. We'll have a vote. All in favor? Opposed? No, the whole thing. Are you voting against or are you okay? Okay. So carried. Uh, last item on the agenda, Junior B Hockey recommendation that the Community Services Committee recommend Council of the Township of Whitewater Region. Uh, sorry, just give me one second. Sorry, just had to clarify a uh, comment in here. Um, sorry, that the Community Services Committee recommend Council of the Township of Whitewater Region, number one, direct staff to apply for a liquor license for the upstairs community hall at the Cobden Astrolab Arena, and number two, an act of bylaw to enter into a two year rental agreement for Junior B Hockey with the Lumber Kings Hockey Organization. You'll see the little blurb at the end there. Well, that's the change. We'll end it there. Uh, mover, Mayor, Seconder, Councillor Mackay. Yeah. We know your question already. About uh, the tier two. Yes. Robert? Um, Councillor Jackson made a good point that we don't call it Junior B Hockey anymore, but we wanted to just continue with what's been out there. And as we formalize this relationship a little further, we'll talk about, um, sorry, the tier, is it tier two? CHL Tier 2. Uh, so the negotiations have uh, been occurring between the Recreation Association and the Hockey Club. I was uh, recently brought in to determine how this would impact the township. Um, we've also recently been informed that the Rec Association would like us to enter into the agreement despite the fact that they're the operators. Um, which I think poses some questions but um, at the end of the day we are the owners of the facility. Um, we are working on a rental agreement that is based on the one that's used at the City of Pembroke and also uh, the City of Armprior. And we've also vetted it with uh, legal counsel to ensure that it has all the necessary provisions. So it would include the standard clauses in terms of damage, insurance, and indemnification. And we're confirming, we're going to confirm with our insur insurance provider the, the amount of insurance that would be uh, desired. The first recommendation is to license the upstairs hall. We feel that that would be beneficial on game days, but also uh, drive some rental of the upstairs hall. Um, and what we would do is we would um, work with the, the hockey club. They would run the bar and get 70, be responsible for, for that and scheduling with uh, proper servers and receive 75% of the profits and we would gain 25% just by holding the license. Uh, we would offer the same kind of um, possibility for the Recreation Association, however, we're not sure if they would do that. Um, but it would be up to the township. We, could, we would, if we had to staff it ourselves, we would get 100% of the proceeds. Um, there's been negotiation with uh, Jerry McIntyre, who operates the, the, the arena um, and uh, the hockey club in terms of um, rental fees and, and uh, practice ice and practice ice as much as possible as was announced last uh, meeting would be there would be one of the times that's not utilized right now it's the ice is sitting there so it's good in terms of that. Um, there has been some discussion on whether or not the club should operate the canteen. I confirmed from Jerry today that they the association only makes about three thousand dollars operating the canteen and if anybody that's been involved with that would realize that that requires a lot of time scheduling and planning and that's not even factoring Jerry's time. 
Um, so the club is willing to try the canteen and an exchange would allow the rec association and minor hockey to run the 50-50. I have mentioned to Jerry and I haven't yet to the, the rec association that they would have more to gain from running the 50-50, uh, 20 some home games, a big crowd, um, and that money would be reinvested in the facility but also in minor hockey in our community. So I think from an operation standpoint, allowing the hockey club to, to run the canteen um, and then with some ongoing discussions on when they would schedule it to be open, I think it would be appropriate, but we, we would figure that out. But my recommendation would be that we would allow the, the hockey team to run the canteen in exchange for 50-50 uh, proceeds to be um, possible for, for the community, which I think is more beneficial. Um, and then there would be the opportunity to sell advertisements. There are some, if you've been to the, to the Beachburg Arena, you know that the current operator has made full taken full advantage of selling advertisements. It's not necessarily the case in Cobden. So we, uh, we've looked at different areas where, where selling advertisement would make sense to support the team. Um, and as I said, that agreement would come back in uh, two weeks' time uh, as we continue to vet it with uh, both the Rec Association and the Hockey Club and our legal counsel. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer them. Council McLaughlin was up first. Uh, just for clarification, when you say operate the canteen, is that through that during just when the Junior B games are, are or is that the total minor hockey as well? And the uh, they would operate it for this for the entire season. They have a they currently operate it um, at the facility in in Pembroke. They offer it they operate it for the entire time. And we would just uh, negotiate with them when, when the canteen would need to be open. And I mentioned to Jerry that we could supplement some of the times that it's not opened with proper vending machines. So if it's not open, there's, there's food and beverages available. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that we, we still need to have that for the, the minor hockey functions as well. Yeah, as Robert said, it would be operating full time, so not, not just the junior B. Basically the same, same as what it is now? Yeah. Okay. No, as long as the scheduling isn't changed, I'm, I'm being favored. Yeah, and I think they would need that to to make uh, to make up some sort of a profit from it. Uh, Councilor, well, I was just saying, I was just going to ask the same question. Okay. And I, I agree with Councilor Bob. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, ready to vote. So, all in favor? All opposed? Carried. And that's it for me. Um, I just want to make a personal note to Jordan. Um, we had a couple of meetings in the last week uh, that uh, Jordan's first uh, first two weeks here, actually first few days here, we held your feet to the fire pretty quick. We had a street strut meeting and we also had a uh, Taste the Valley meeting and uh, so far I've been extremely impressed with Jordan's abilities and organization and just his, uh, his knowing contacts in the Valley. So I, I'm very, very excited to have you with me and us. Um, but uh, personally on a couple of the other committees and hopefully my gray hair will slow down now that, uh, that you're coming on board. Doesn't work. Doesn't <laughs> no? <laughs> so, good job. Yep. We have to give him a raise now that you said that. I, I think that went for all of council. They're very impressed. We're just going to take a very, very quick break.